What? Oh, right. Okay. All right, welcome to the Cape students on the inside. We going through a uh, basic I and I run down here. I'm gonna get a little cage up who on the inside. in the chat who's in the chat who's in the chat I'm going through the problem solving process, which is basically a I how you structure your I have a simple exp uh, simple breakdown. And let's see how well it works. Ow. <clears throat> if you have questions, ask. If not, then just follow along. So this is keep if you're doing keep IT most likely you have a IA to do and your IA is due soon and you just need some kind of follow through on what is expected. Alright, so this is how your IT IA in lower six is supposed to look like, but most of the stuff that you take from lower six you're gonna carry to upper six because in upper six all you have to do is um add on the building of the um the building of the actual tool now. So, um, what the IA trying to get it to do is to do something along with the along with the problem definition stages in problem solving. So it's going to try to get you to define your problem, do some analysis, come up with a possible solution, select one, and then this part here is lower six or unit one. And this part here is upper six or unit two. So you're gonna go through it and then this is going to look something like this. So you have to define the problem. So based on the exam examiner's reports and whatnot that I went through and um, some workshops I went through as te went to as teachers, it must contain some description of what is expected of a solution, possible limitations, and uh, it need to take into account the implementation of our solution. So that looks something like this. Defining a problem needs to have four parts. You must have who or what the problem is affecting. You must have the nature of the problem. The nature of the problem could be performance, efficiency, control or security. Performance, information, efficiency or control or security. So it could be a performance problem could be an information problem, could be an efficiency problem, or it could be a control or security problem. But must have some sort of clarity of that inside the problem definition. And you must have the undesirable effects. If you do have the undesirable effects, then the definition of the problem wouldn't be working, not working out too well. And then... Hold on. Right. So then what happens after that is whenever you define your problem, the problem must have 
who the problem is affecting who or what so you have to make sure you check that box and then you have to make sure that you have the nature of the problem whether it's performance information efficiency control or security and you must have its undesirable effects and you must have who is seeking the solution so look at this let's see this problem definition is here the Piaco International Airport doesn't have enough monitors updating the flight data for passengers to see. As a result, the passengers have to walk long distances to find an available monitor, causing some of them to miss the airport in times. The airport management cannot afford to have any more disgruntled passengers. So let's ask ourselves the basic questions. Who or what is being affected? Who or what is passengers? So passengers 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 they are clearly people being affected next question to ask the nature of the problem what type of problem is it well it's an information problem because the passengers um, can't see the flight data so they don't know what information is going on so it's an information problem. It's definitely not a control or security problem. It might be an efficiency problem, but it's more likely that it's an information based problem. Next one is what are the undesirable effects? Undesirable effects is that they would be disgruntled and they miss their boarding times. So, missing their boarding times and being disgruntled would be an undesirable effect. And then the last part is who is seeking the solution and you must have who is seeking the solution which is the management, where is the management? Airport management. Airport management cannot afford to have any problems. Cool. So. Now let's try to come up with our problem definition and we're going to use the table as a guide. So let's use this table here. Let's say I have, let's say for your IA you want to choose like your school cafeteria, right? Um, let's go through the school cafeteria, school cafeteria will be like this. Um, let's say the the cafeteria at Valley High School is always sorry, always has long lines and students often do not get the item they want in time for in time the workers mix up no, the workers, um, the workers take long to give the students their food, and this causes them to be late for class. The management of, of the cafeteria would like to solve this problem all right something like that so let's ask ourselves do we have the things that are necessary can we tick off all of the lines let's see so i ask myself do i have who or what is the problem affecting Yes, the students often do not get the item they want in time. So that is who or what the problem is affecting. 
Then the next one is the nature of the problem. Is it performance, information, efficiency, or control or security? You could see that the workers take long to give. So it could either be performance or efficiency. One of the two. Or it could be both. But it's not an information problem and it's not a control or security problem. What are the undesirable effects? They take long to give them their food and this causes them to be late for class. Right, being late for class is the undesirable effect. And who is seeking the solution? The management of the cafeteria would like to solve this problem. So that is a basic, um, basic problem definition. If you're doing any problem definition, then it should look something like that. Alright, so always remember, problem definition must be able to answer all 40 questions. If you can answer all 40 questions, then your problem definition is okay. And you'll get the two marks that would be allocated towards a good problem definition. Um, yeah, I have a breakdown of the marks for the IA in a, in a other video, boy. Do I? Yeah, I believe so. I have it somewhere. Lois. Uh, where do I have the. I outline. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Inside the syllabus here we should have the This is the old the, the syllabus that we're currently using. This is probably going to change soon. But do, um Internal assessment, where do they have the eye? I'll show you the marks. Yeah, so if you have a good um, problem definition, you get two marks. So a complete and accurate description of the problem or partial accurate description of the problem. Right, so that's one mark or two marks. So if your problem definition is well laid out and you're able to answer all the questions on the table then you'll get these two marks so that's the first part of our keep i next um next video i'll be doing is the um the analysis with the spread with the um interviews and observations and all that stuff cool good see you in the next video